How is your Easter stash doing? I gave out all of my Swedish fish yesterday. It's gone. Are your chocolate rabbits earless? Are your chocolate nougat eggs gone? Are your jelly beans a little low now? Have you put the baskets away? Have you uprooted the Easter Bunny Welcome Here wooden thing on the stake that you put in front of your door? Is Easter put away? The problem we have, I think, is that we don't understand the nature of holidays versus faith events. We are in the season, midway through in fact, the season of Easter, 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, between the resurrection of Jesus and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Easter, today in the Gospel, we go all the way back to Easter Sunday. It's like we never left. Today, in our Gospel, we are with a couple of disciples heading from Jerusalem to Emmaus. It's Easter Sunday, and they have no idea. They are full of the concern that they saw Jesus die, the confusion that a couple of women said, that they've been told that Jesus was raised. The witness of Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved going into the tomb, seeing the folded burial cloth and saying, he's not here. They walk the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus in confusion and apprehension and grief and wonderment about what all this means. For them, it's still Sunday. We know what it's like when it's Sunday, because if it's Sunday, we can go home and uh, we can you know, watch our NASCAR and our golf and the basketball playoffs and our baseball games. And we can go home from church and it's Sunday and it's a routine and, and we know that in seven more days it's going to be Sunday again and maybe you have your own routine for Sunday but Sundays are Sundays are pretty good days they're definitely not Monday right <laughs> Sunday but like the disciples on the road to Emmaus it's a day that confuses us because it's the day that we gather together, that we hear rumor, perhaps, of the resurrection. But Luther says that Sunday is a little Easter. That Easter isn't this one holiday that, the, you know, the day after Easter we go to Target and they have the 70% off sale of all that Easter candy and then after that it's gone, right? Because they need to make room for the barbecues and the July 4th flags and, and all that, and the, the pool stuff, because it's summer. Within 48 hours of Easter it never existed in retail. They've moved on. Luther says we never move on from Easter. Luther says that every Sunday is a little Easter. Because if it's just another Sunday, then nothing has changed. It's all routine. We've come to church. We go home. Maybe we go out for lunch. Maybe we come home and we've got... Maybe Sunday is laundry day. No, I hear no. No. <laughs> Sunday, it's a routine. Nothing has changed. But if it's Easter, then everything's changed. Because Easter is about the power of resurrection to transform our lives. The power of resurrection in which Christ broke the bonds of death. The power of death trampled hell underfoot and opened the gate of heaven for us. If today is Easter, everything 
has changed. If today is Sunday, nothing really has changed. I just came back from four days in Orlando at uh, several meetings with our Florida Bahamas Senate and our annual assembly. And a story was shared from our larger church, from a pastor who pastored up in Philadelphia. And she uh, pastored at a suburban church, affluent. It's one of those, it's a good job. It's not. It's a job where you can, can preach and teach and baptize and marry and bury. And you don't have, to, there's nothing you're really worried about. Everyone loves you. You come to work. It's great. And then she, um, she traveled on the subway. She didn't drive. It's the city. It's a little crazy, right? Philly. So one day she missed her train and she had to get off downtown. And there were these long lines at the bathroom and the people were trying to catch their trains, the businessmen, the businesswomen, and they were impatient because, you know, sometimes you just have to go and you don't want to miss your train. And they were shouting at people inside the bathroom and it turns out that there were homeless people in the bathrooms trying to, you know, get out of the cold. Anyone ever been in Philly in the winter? How cold is it? Cold. Cold. And they were impatient at the homeless, calling them names, shouting at them, urging at them. And this pastor, at some point, something just snapped inside of her. And she told those people to just go away. And she realized that day that Easter had broken into her heart. And that from that day forth, nothing would be the same. She quit her job, resigned for call. She began to go back to work in her old vocation of a, as a therapist, so that, in order that, on Sunday mornings, she could find the homeless where they were and be church among them, with them, together. She started the Welcome Church, a church for and with the homeless. Everything had changed for her. She knew that they needed some respite. They needed to get off the street, even for a little while, to drink a cup of tea, to just put a roof over their heads for just a little while. And she began to go around the city and ask all the churches if she and her homeless congregation could spend an hour somewhere in a room. She kept getting turned down again and again. No one wanted the homeless anywhere near their church until she came upon one of the Lutheran churches in its heyday, this church had worshipped 800 people. Huge, magnificent, old sanctuary. And it was down to 80 people. We know how that happens. Churches began to shrink and to die. And they said, we have so much space, we don't know what to do with it. Sure. And they began to meet there, this homeless church, an hour a week for some respite, drink some tea, get off the street. And then the pastor, you see, this is what happens, right? The power of the resurrection, the power of Easter changes us. It makes us bold. Because with the power of the resurrection comes the promise of the kingdom. And if we have the promise of the kingdom of God, and we know whose we are, God's truth, then we are bold to ask. And she went and she began to ask the pastor, do you have any parishioners that might want to do ministry with us? He said, Sure. And so the congregation of 80 people became a congregation of 240 people as people began to flock to the congregation because their hearts were touched by the power of Easter being lived out in and through the work of the Welcome Church. Now, it gets really cold if you're on the street. And the homeless began to suffer from frostbite and lose their toes. And doctors came and volunteered and helped them so they wouldn't lose even more of their feet. It's hard to walk in regular shoes if you're missing part of your feet. And so a volunteer who was starting a business with orthotic shoes, he heard about the plight and he said, how many shoes do you need? The pastor looked at him somewhat nervously, even though she had the boldness of Easter. I mean, she knows how many homeless people they had touched. She said, 200. He said, no problem. So Monday, Thursday, 
the doctors came and the orthotic shoe maker guy came with his 200 boxes of shoes and the homeless came Monday, Thursday the night of the new commandment to love one another the night that Jesus kneeled down and washed his disciples feet and we had doctors and businessmen washing the feet of the homeless missing toes and other parts and we had the homeless watching, washing the feet of the doctors and the businessmen. It was a profound and powerful moment. And then they put on their new shoes and went out into the night. The ministry now has spread from one city to another. Church for the homeless, where they are, meeting them, where they gather. They have choirs of homeless people singing, raising their voices to God, breaking bread as we break bread, transformed by the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Easter is gone in the stores. Easter is almost gone in our collection of chocolate nugget eggs and jelly beans. But Easter is still here. For this is not Sunday. This is Easter. Every Sunday when we gather and have God's word poured out and breaking in on us, when we gather and we break bread at the table and experience the outpouring of God's grace in his flesh and in his blood. It is Easter and resurrection screams, burns in our hearts. The two disciples were walking, heads hang low, heading to, to Emmaus, a defeated people, a hopeless people. And then Jesus appeared in their midst and opened for them in the scripture the promise that God had laid before the creation of the world. And Jesus sat with them and broke bread with them and their eyes were open and they ran back to Jerusalem. For Easter had blossomed in their lives. They ran with burning hearts. For the good news had seized them. And would never let them go. What day is it for you today? Is it Sunday? Or is it Easter? Is it Sunday? Or is it Easter? Is the power of the resurrection seizing you, promising you the kingdom, lighting your hearts on fire and opening your eyes that out there in the world you see Jesus. Out there in the world You are an instrument of the Spirit changing lives even as the Spirit is working through them to change your life. What day is it for you? Is it just Sunday? Or is it Easter? For friends, Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.